Hello, GBA families. I wanted to take a moment to thank you personally for the pictures, the videos, and the comments that you send my way. It just makes me so happy to see the many choices that you're making that makes your life better. And I wanted to emphasize also about this Friday's theme, which is healthy living habits. I know that you kids hear it every day to eat better, to drink water, to exercise, but I want you to take a look at this. I put a video on the comments below that talk about your immune system. So you will be wondering, what is my immune system? Just as your respiratory system, your digestive system, everything that is inside you is made to perfection. And one of those systems helps you fight disease. It is like a, like a self-defense mechanism. It's like a whole army inside your body that helps you fight disease, viruses, bacteria, and anything that harms your body. And the only way to keep that army strong is by eating healthy, by drinking water, by breathing healthy air, by exercising, by taking moments to be thankful about everything around you, and by keeping yourself clean. So I just wanted to make sure that you understand that so that you can move on to start building those healthy choices every day. See, every fruit and vegetable, according to its color, gives you a benefit to every organ of your body. That is truly amazing to me. But everything is made to perfection so that you can take advantage of that and really live a healthy life. Anyway, I am so glad to see you today, and I hope I can see you personally very soon. Take care of yourself and enjoy today's video. Bye-bye. Bring it up to the hygiene stops decay. Yeah, you got a fish, dude. I got one. You got your first fish. Bring it over here. Oh my god. What do you say? What do you say to mama? <laughs> what do you say? Hey. Got my first fish. That was quick too, huh? Mm -hmm. Alright.
Please stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. GBK, on your heart, ready, salute. As a GBA student, I promise to be kind in all I say and to, to be safe at all times, to do my best at home, at school, and everywhere I go, because it's the right thing to do. My name is A Adeline, and I'm in third grade. My name is Victoria, and I'm in fourth grade. And we want to say a couple of things. What, do, what is pandemic? Um, pandemic is something that we're in right now, so it's like... Wait. <laughs> it's hard for people. People get sick, and... How do you feel about it? I feel sad for all these people who have it and Ooh, I just feel really sad. I got one thing. Um, we're doing distance learning because we can't, we're not in there with the teacher and it's sad that people have the mm -hmm. what can What can you do to prevent it? To prevent getting sick? You can wash your hands, keep wear masks. My name is Nathan and I am in 6th grade and I think a pandemic is COVID-19 and how I feel about it is that the teachers are working as hard as they can to keep this school running so just help them out, don't talk back, just stay handy. Hi my name is Maddie and I am in 6th grade and what I what I think pandemic is kind of what we're going through and like social distancing, wearing a mask and like what I say is like you can encourage, um, be respectful and just be really nice to even though you're doing online work uh, and I, what I like about it is that I'm thankful for is that I can spend more time with my family. Good morning, GVA. Mr. Ruley here with the morning announcements for Friday, October 2nd, 2020. All right, let's start this off today with This Week in History. Two really cool things going on here. All right, first of all, in 1890, Yosemite was established as a national park. Ben President Benjamin Harrison was able to make this happen in 1890. There's a little history behind that. Basically, in the gold rush of the 1849, it brought a lot of miners to the area and tourists. And in the region, this led to a lot of damage to the ecosystem with people just not taking care of things. So they were able to, uh, President Lincoln was actually able to declare the area a public trust. And it was the first area of land that was protected by the government. Now, Yellowstone actually became the first state park in a uh, national park, rather, in 1872. But shortly after that, Yosemite was established as a national park in 1890. Now, I hope you guys have had a chance to go out to Yosemite or at least see some really cool pictures out there. It is beautiful and certainly worth protecting. Now, another really cool story here. We have the invention of a thing called penicillin. Now, penicillin is a medicine that we use to kill bacteria. Like when you get a cut and you get infected, sometimes you need a strong medicine like penicillin. And in 1928, Sir Alexander Fleming invented or discovered rather penicillin. Now, it was by accident. And a lot of our inventions and a lot of our advancements were actually made by accident. And so he was a bacteriologist. He studied bacteria and he left a petri dish of bacteria out overnight. And he noticed in the morning it had some mold on it. 
and the mold that formed there ended up killing and eating some of the bacteria there. So then he discovered that this mold is very similar to the mold you find on bread when you leave it out too long. You know, that gross, icky, kind of fuzzy, green nonsense you get on bread sometime? Definitely don't want to eat it. At any rate, they was able to uh, isolate what would, what would uh, kill the bacteria there and ended up creating a medicine that really does do a lot of good for people there. So uh, in no way should you ever eat bread mold if you are sick, you will get more sick, but they were able to take that and make a substance called penicillin that has really helped us out. All right, moving right along here, I wanna talk a little bit more about eye health. Now, last week we had talked about a few things here, one of which would be the thumb focus. So you remember when you were taking a little bit of an eye break, you can put up your thumb, you focus on that thumbnail there, and you stretch it out, and then you go back in. And then you stare at it and you stretch it out again, and then you come back in. And what that does is it helps relaxes the muscles in your eyes. Because remember, your eyes are constantly stretching and relaxing your muscles in order to focus so you can see things. So activities like these can really help. Now, another one we talked about was a distance focus, and that's where you picked something out the window far away and you just looked at it for 20 seconds. This allows the muscles in your eyes to relax. We'd also talked about doing that figure eight. That's where you're moving your eyes in a figure eight. And it's almost like stretching out your muscles, much like you, you would do a PE where you stretch out your muscles. Well, by doing that figure eight, you're stretching out your eye muscles there. So I wanted to talk about just a few different measures you can take to protect your eyes. Now, with all this computer time, one thing you want to look at is adjusting your brightness. Now, um, when you adjust your brightness, like if it's too bright, it's causing a lot of stress on your eyes. If it's too dim, you have to squint and kind of see. So play around with the brightness and find something that feels comfortable. Again, not too bright, not too dim, and you want to find the right level of brightness for your eyes. Some computers even have a night mode, and that can also be helpful too. I know I have that set on my computer. Another thing here, kind of simple, I didn't even think about this until Dr. Rosenau pointed it out, that's to clean your screen. If you have a bunch of uh, fingerprints on your screen or dust on your screen, that makes it harder to see and you're likely ending up squinting trying to read. And even if it's just a little bit, all of those little things do um, can really add up to a big problem there. So you know what, if you address your brightness, clean your screen, probably will help just a bit. But the other thing here is remember to take some screen breaks. Now, I know you're on your computers a lot for schoolwork and other things, I totally get it. Whenever you can, one of the best things you can do, as far as Dr. Rosenau is saying, is look at something out the window, focus on a tree that's down the street or something out in the sky somewhere, and just let your eyes relax. So look at something far away, count to 20, and that will do wonders for your eyes. All right, folks, so let's remember screen breaks and eye health. All right, whoops, looks like we skipped one. Uh, just a short one here. I always want to remind you that, hey, we'd love to see your pictures on these morning announcements. Uh, please go ahead and send any pictures you do have and want to get on the morning announcements here to Mrs. Delgado through Parent Square or, as always, a.delgado at greatvalleyacademy.com. All right, folks, that's all from us today. I would like to always remind you to be kind, have fun, do your best, read every day. Take care, everybody. Hey, hey, it's Mrs. Harrington with Gems from Gems coming to you back on campus from another location. You can probably figure out where I am. I'm in the garden with this fabulous mural behind me. The air is cleared, I'm back outside. So I'm here to share this week's quote, which is, see the good, see the good. What does that mean? That means look for the positive. Find something in every situation that can make you happy. There's usually something even small you can find. Maybe it's, it's, it's as simple as you had a really difficult assignment to complete and you finished it. Or maybe it's the fact that you've grown closer to your family members since you've been home with distance learning. Or maybe, just maybe, you've come to realize how much you miss being on campus and you won't forget that feeling once you return. So remember to see the good. All right, see you next week. Bye.
Welcome to Minute to Win It. Today we have two students competing, um, boy versus girl, yeah. So we are gonna do suck it up. Each child has a candy dish and they must suck up the candy dish using a straw and put it into the other dish. The one that transfers the most candies at the end of a minute wins. Let's meet our contestants. Over here we got Abraham, Lady Abraham. And then just right over here we have Charlotte. Hey Charlotte. All right, are you guys ready to play? Yeah. All right, do not start yet until you hear we got a minute to win it, okay? All right, audience, are we ready? Look at the contestants go. They're both trying so hard. Abraham's got a system down there. Let's see what he can do. Nice job. Two in a row. Look at Charlotte. She's got a good system too. Oh, it bounced, but she did so great. Look at them go. Great work, guys. Keep it up. What a great job. Keep going. All right, keep it going. All right, we have 10 seconds left. Let's do a countdown. Ready? Miss Justine back again with another life skill lesson. And today we will be talking. Hi GVA, this is your student assistant specialist, Miss Justine, back again with another life skill lesson. And today we will be talking about winning and losing. First off, I want to say losing is a learning lesson. So we don't go into things having all of the knowledge or being perfect because being perfect is impossible. We all have things that we can work on or change and when it comes to losing, whether it's a board game or even getting not so great grades on an exam, then we can go with the approach of, okay, what can I work on for next time or what can I change to do a little bit better too. Second, win with grace. We know what it feels like to be on the other side and it doesn't feel that great. But when you can win and still be compassionate towards the other person or be supportive, then that win is even greater because you're able to help the other person know that, hey, even though you may not have won today, it's okay because we have all been there and don't give up. And last but not least, it is okay to ask for help. Just like losing is a life skill lesson or, you know, taking that lesson and trying to work on it, it's okay to reach out to your friends or family or teachers or coaches to make sure that, you know, hey, I, you may have some tips that may help me for next time. Or do you mind helping me with my long division? I'm really struggling at, at this point. Some people may have some tips that you can utilize and improve in whatever you're trying to practice. Alrighty, and for our quote for this video, it'll be the difference between winning and losing is most often not quitting by Walt Disney. So GVA, don't give up, keep working hard, and keep aiming for those goals. You got this. <laughs>